What's up, it's Chris from Motorcycling Kiwi Style and today we're going to lose those carbs. Before you think this is a fitness video, we're actually going to get around to removing the carburetors from the Suzuki Bandit 1200 budget project. Now this was actually really straightforward. I was quite surprised and didn't even have to consult my Suzuki manual. I did this in two parts. First part I did was during the day where I just removed the seat and the tank. It's actually really easy to do. Just a couple of step by step processes. Let's get into it. The Suzuki Bandit is a very easy bike to work on. Everything is very well thought out. To take off your seat, just put the ignition keys in here. Turn the key and pull the seat back. As you can see, you've got a bit of understorage there. Typical toolkit, haven't even bothered to look into there. Just be your standard Suzuki tools. This is quite interesting. Got some sort of relays into there. Not quite sure where it's actually all going because it's definitely not the turn signals because they blink really quick. I have to pull all that apart and have a good look at it. Now to get the tank off, one's nice and easy. Always take these rubber grommets out if they're a little loose. Next step here is just to tilt the tank up. Now you've got two breather overflows and then you've got your tank gauge connector. Those two disconnected as well. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the tank backwards then slide it up on its left hand side to disconnect the vacuum hose and the fuel hose. Make sure you've got the fuel tap turned to on or reserve. Definitely not prime. If you have it on prime fuel will just come gushing out when you disconnect the hose. So vacuum hose off and fuel hose off. Right, the first thing we do is we take the air box, air filter and cover off. Quite easy, just two little screws here. Just be careful not to lose the screws when it pops out, of course. Put one into there, one into there. Right, pull the air filter out, looking good. Brand new, of course, so, so it should. Right, the next thing we'll do is we'll take the side covers off before we undo the air box. So, no, we need this, an Allen key, of course. This one here's got a rubber grommet, so that makes a bit of a racket. Screw, when you take it off, this one here's held on by rubber. Be careful of this, you don't want to snap those lugs. Put that in a safe place so you don't stamp on it. And while we're here, we might as well do the other side at the same time. Right. Once again, watch that screw pop. Oh, there goes the other one. That's cool. Pop that over in a safe place as well. Right, next thing we do is take out the earbox mounts. Put them over there so we don't drop them. So that's that undone. Now we've got to remove the rear clamps for the carburetor. So for that we'll need our Phillips screwdriver. Right, so the clamps are here. One, two, three and four. The outside ones are fairly easy to get at. Now disclaimer, I already had these off earlier just to cheat them so the bolts are fairly loose. But you get the idea. Undo these, these quite wide to just a little bit of thread showing. Right, number two, straight down there. Very straightforward, compared to working on some of the other bikes I've worked on before. B400s in particular, absolutely shocking. Right, we'll do number four. We'll do number three, which is right there. 
Honestly, I was actually very surprised at how easy this bike is to work on. Everyone tells me, but you don't know until you give it a go yourself. Right. Now, we've got this little breather tube here. Just got a wee clip on it. To be honest, you don't actually need to take it off because all you're doing is pulling the airbox back. So, with a little bit of persuasion, that should just pop off because the carbs are still mounted on the front. Nice and easy. As you can see, there's not a lot of gap there, but there's sufficient. So the next step to get it out of the way is, is undo the next step is to undo the throttle position sensor. Let's just unplug. Just squeeze that in there. Now I would put this out of the way. It's going okay. through a wee rubber band type thing. Must be some sort of retainer to keep it out of the way of everything. So just sort of gently put that out of the way. Here. And okay, so we've got the fuel line here. Now I've already undone the, the throttle cables. They're very easy to pop off, just a little wee hang on them, just undo that, you just rotate the throttle body lever, pop that off, and then pop the front one off because it's got two returns. Now this is cool. <laughs> Look at that. Damn. I think that's on the shopping list. Someone put it back together like that. Why would you? It's alright. It's good to good to find it now. Okay, next thing is the choke lever. It's a cable. This is quite straightforward to pull, pull off. All you do is just pull that lever back, pop it out there, then you've got to turn the cable all the way down to the bottom. Then the wee it should just pop out. A little bit fiddly but not too bad. Screwdriver sometimes helps. There we go. So now we've got the three cables out the way. Check cable, two throttle cables, one and three quarter throttle cables. Got the coils there obviously, I'm going to look at replacing them as well because that is a weak point of the bandits, but that's the later stage. Carburetors now. Okay, so once again, four screws, number four, number three, and number two, and number one. So we leave this here, don't adjust it unless you have to. So, whoops. Let's try the right tool, Chris. Don't be a tool, Chris. Once again, I've already had these apart because I did terrible footage before. I had to put them back together again and then put them, pull them apart here for the video. But that's alright, practice makes perfect. It actually explains how easy it really is. Very, very easy. So that's number four throttle body. And just remember these were super tight before. So, yeah, I just left them loose ish for the purposes of this video. That should be right. So that's number three. Get number one out the way. Number one, and number two is right down here. So I'll show you. It's number two right down there where my screwdriver is. Essentially, you can put these screws wherever you like on the throttle bodies, it doesn't actually matter. I prefer to put them where I can access the screwdriver quite easily. Find you don't have to undo them heaps. Right, all set to go. We should be able to pop the carbs out now. Right, so get a little bit of persuasion. There you go, loosened. One, two, and two middle ones are out. Right the airbox back as far as we can, start poking it through, 
Oh, that's what I forgot to do. Take off the vacuum hose. All right. That normally goes to either number three or number four. On my one, it's on number four. I inquired about it because a lot of people say number three, but at the end of the day, it's only a vacuum. So all these carburetors have got the same vacuum anyway, so it shouldn't make any difference. I'm thinking number three is probably because it's easier to access. I don't know. Normally they just have blanking plugs on them, which I'll show you when I get the carbs out. So just be careful not to wreck the rubbers or the clamps. I mean, how easy is this? Some four-cylinder bikes I've, I've done in the past are so damn tricky. And these are carburetors. So talking before about the blanking plugs. Oops, and that's something you've got to watch out for too. It's a little bit of fuel still in the bowl. That's okay. So getting back to it, these are the blanking plugs for number one, number two, number three, and number four. Four, so yeah that's all right so what we do now is we're going to wrap them up keep them all weather safe because my groovy leaky garage I've got to be careful here but in the next video we'll go through and strip them down step by step and just see how good or how grim these are and just see if I can get it to run right after servicing it. Top tip, one good thing to do once you've pulled the carburetors out is actually start putting things back together so you don't lose them. Air filter, air filter cover, screw back in. The benefit is just not losing stuff, not losing nuts and bolts, not breaking covers and just keeping your tabs on everything. Also it's easy to remove, to put everything back together and you just know where it is. And the other top tip is to always wrap up the carburetors when you've got them removed. No point in getting dirt into them. Like that. What about that throttle cable, eh? Definitely on the shopping list. And last but not least, always seal up the intakes and of course cover the engine area. I also put a bit of plastic over it and also put the seat back on. Cover all those electrics. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you really enjoyed that video. Please leave comments of what you thought, how I went, if I did things good, if I did things not so great. It's really, really good to hear. The next step will be doing the carburetor strip itself, and I'll be doing that step by step and itemizing everything I do, which, which hopefully will be of some use to some people who are really getting stuck into these really cool Suzuki bandits. Yeah, feel free to like and subscribe if you really enjoy the video and to keep watching my content. Take care and please ride safe.